Welcome back to the show, Reds. This is the Upper Tier Podcast. It's the Shanky Sessions. We're on the way home. It's a beautiful day out in Dublin and all down through the East Coast. Thank God. Lifts the mood, lifts the spirit, especially after Wednesday evening. Yeah, us Reds, we are hurting, we're being bantered, we're being taken apart. And rightly so. Um, it's been a tough week. Um, the realisation that we're probably going to go out of this season on a whimper. We're probably going to send Jorgen out on a whimper. Um, and it's crazy, isn't it? What a season to decide to make a documentary. Now, isn't it just the maddest thing? What a season to make a documentary. And it's really, really sad after, you know, some of the success that we've had during Jorgen's time. You know, and obviously we've had some disappointments on the way as well. But, you know, you have to get close sometimes to get there, don't you? But we never thought it would end like this. We never thought we would go out this kind of soft you know, cowardly kind of poor kind of way. You know, the match against Everton the other night, so, so poor, all around the pitch, on so many levels. Not even fighting for it, not even, you know, and even the gaffer kind of thrown in the towel as well, you know, like at a time where we needed a goal or two, maybe. Jaden Dan sitting on the bench, I'm not saying he would have scored, but he's been in really good form. You know, and we bring on two fullbacks. One who's never scored for the club, and the other who has a little bit more delivery, but really doesn't score a whole lot of goals and costs the Simicus. That was our answer. So we really went down on a whimper the other night. There's been a number of these occasions this season where we just haven't showed up at big times in the season. Kind of let ourselves down, let the team down, let the gaffer down. You know, we've had issues with injuries, we've had issues with selection, we've had issues with not finishing our dinner, you know, and you, you just look at it now, I mean, you can look at a lot of those players now and you can make a case for a change so much bigger than just European leaving, you know, like you could make a case for most of them, to be honest, with the exception of probably less than a handful. So, there's a lot of work for Michael Edwards and Richard Hughes to do, and we spoke about it on these podcasts, but we are previewing the West Ham game. Another 12.30, another early start, on our trip to London. Hasn't been overly a happy hunting ground for us this season, uh, London. Uh, it's been our arch enemy, really. Um, but it's West Ham, who are in a really poor vein of form themselves. Moyes looks like he's going to exit the building as well. We've seen all the shenanigans during the week with Amarin and everything and all. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a tough game because they'll be expecting a reaction there at home. We'll be looking for a reaction, but that's a massive question coming out of Wednesday. Like, within the space of a couple of days, which is more or less recovery and a bit of, you know, maybe tactical kind of stuff. How does Jorgen lift these guys up off the mat? These guys were sucker punched, battered, bet down with the Mama Rhodes belt, absolutely pulverised into the pitch on Wednesday night. Um, didn't fancy it on so many levels. No, no, no fire in the belly for the battle. No fire in the belly because it was a derby. No fire in the belly because it was a title race. We just literally rocked up the goodness and rolled over and said, there you go, boys. So how does he lift them then against West Ham? And that's another, that's our either our third or fourth now away game on the trot. Um, always a difficult place to go. It's West Ham supporters always in full voice. Um, and, and the makings of a good team there, some serious players there who can who can threaten us and we'll we'll, we'll talk about that as well. But who who do we want? Let me know in the comments, folks. Who who do we want to play? Who do we want to start? Who who do we want to remain loyal to? Who's 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 really let us down and shouldn't be getting picked? Or has the gaffer's hands tied in that case? You know, certainly Curtis the other night was really really poor. Kanate, 
I seriously can't find it in me any way, shape or form in any way possible that Ibu Kanade starts over Jarrell Kwanzaa and I've been saying that now for a while I think Kanade has come back off that injury and I don't know what it is have we just have we just taken the Kanade body and swapped it with the Up Meccano body or something like that or what's going on because he's now turning like a truck um, and that's really really concerning and if he if he kind of starts you'll see the kind of the kind of bullying we've seen from Ateta on the pitch to him in the Palace game we've seen it first hand I was in the stand even off the ball we're going to get more of that with Mikel Antonio and that's not going to be a good recipe and the one thing we can all agree on in relation to Kanate is when he gets in tight to big physical players like that more often than not he loses because he handles them badly he gets in too tight he can't turn quick enough his reading of the game all that kind of stuff is just whatever has happened has fallen off a cliff since he came back off that injury so for me Jarrell Kwanzaa has to start so the question is Virgil's obviously going to start um, does Robbo start or does Costa start does Trent start I would think so um, or what are we actually saying about these players is all the kind of crap we're seeing we're hearing out in the ether about transfers and Darwin might be exiting the building and Trent heavily linked with Real Madrid and all this kind of stuff is that destabling this situation should Joe Gomez start in the midfield surely we're going to go with the the recipe that worked at Fulham surely Ryan Gravenberch Endo and Harvey is the case for the midfield McAllister working so hard the other night like a Trojan trying to get stuck in but just looks absolutely banjaxed like the season has caught up the amount of ball he has played the, the mileage he has put in literally running at times that midfield on his own um, Dominic Sabozloy do we give him another run against West Ham? You know? Or do we sit him down? Do we need to do we need to explain to these players that a performance like Wednesday night is rewarded with you will sit down and you will watch? Um what do we want on the front line? Does Cody come back in? Congratulations to him and his wife on the birth of their child. Couldn't believe the absolute crap I was listening to the other night about people pinning stuff on Cody Gakbo because his wife is having the baby not him who are these people are they just absolutely have they got sawdust between their ears or what's going on these are the same people that four weeks prior to that were calling for Gakbo to be ran out of the club they're just fools so Cody might probably come back in and that'd be refreshing and nice to see should Jarrell Kwanzaa start should we go with the front line of Cody Gakbo Jarrell Kwanzaa and then do you put Mo Salah back in there or what do you do Mo Salah to me looks like he's already on a flight I've seen so many runs for him I looked at him in the, the derby the other night him and Nunes 7 jewels, 0-1 they're not they're not putting it in they're not trying you know what I mean Mo Salah looks like he's more concerned between running the ball back to the halfway line than he is about trying to go forward with the ball. And I don't want to disrespect Mo Salah. He's given me some unbelievable moments. And he's been brilliant for the club. You know? But as they say in the movie, when the milk turns sour, us Liverpool fans, we ain't the kind of pussies to drink it. And I think it's a real important point that we make there, you know, that like... I think people have lost their way a little bit within the fan base in terms of we follow Liverpool Football Club and it's Liverpool is the be all and the end all you know and where it's very emotional and very sad that Jürgen's leaving that day was going to come Stevie Gerrard left Fowler left all these great players left you know great managers left Shankly left Paisley left King Kenny left they all left Joe Fagan it happens you know the disappointing thing I suppose for a lot of people at the moment is Alonso couldn't be convinced to come out of Labour Cousin which would have been ideal 
still had its risks to it but would have been ideal Ameren just became a mess I don't know who was advising him but it was absolutely nonsense um, so we find ourselves Gary O'Neill was interviewed glad Gary got an interview um, big fan of Gary O'Neill um, but it looks like it's going to be Arnie Slot. and like I said the other night on the show I don't know really anything about this guy I don't watch the Dutch league I don't have time I watch some of the Dutch clubs when they're in the Champions League or the Europa maybe but I don't have time to watch them I probably couldn't even tell you a Fjorn or a player and I don't know I mean he's won a league and he's won a cup and he looks like he's a bit about him and stuff like that and you see some of the videos and all those kind of things and they all look really really good and I hope he comes in and he balls out and I hope it's a success you know I would hate that all that work that Klopp put in and you know about building up the fan base and all doubters to believers and the culture and this means more and all those key things I would hate for us to revert back and it kind of feels like it doesn't it, it kind of feels like it when all these clubs were balling out and being really successful and on our way we pick up the odd Carabao Cup or whatever it is this season kind of feels that way doesn't it real changing of the guard and stuff so yeah it's going to be massive but getting back to the game anyway Moisey uh, versus Klopp for the last time um, both managers with a huge task to lift their teams Moyes got absolutely obliterated by Crystal Palace the other day and of course we came off a really poor Merseyside derby Klopp's presser today whereas not going into the detail of it and stuff like that it was a bit, a little bit tetchy um, at times a little bit like you see him correcting a little bit of vocab and stuff like that which is not really his thing you know the uncomfortableness of him being asked about Arnie Slot you know um there's a deep emotion within Klopp in relation to the club. He feels like he's part of the fabric of it, and he was. And now he's leaving. Um, and he has to be seen to say the right thing. And, you know, I think I think Edwards coming back as the CEO as well was kind of a bit of a dagger as well. Like, you know, I think this documentary is going to be very interesting, and the stories that come out are going to be very interesting as well. Because I think there's... Um, so much work to be done um, within that squad you know and it, it's hard as well like if you want to bring an elite coach in you know at the very high level um, it's very hard to convince them but look these two boys are going to be tra taking control of you know recruitment you will have an input um, but really you're going to be there to coach now obviously that conversation has been had with Ernie Slot and it's it's okay, he's accepted it. So it's gonna be very, very interesting. And look, we know the job Michael Edwards did. Um he was absolutely critical in our success under Jurgen Klopp. There's no doubt about it. And you can see I've I've done shows on Michael Edwards. I did a show when he left talking about the influence he had on the success of the club and all that kind of stuff and hopefully he can bring that back again um, but it's a poignant moment you know but looking at the West Ham game anyway um, Moisey will be hoping that Jared Bone comes back in he was missing for the Palace game and badly missed Palace are on a, on a tear at the moment under Glasner just look at Mateta and look at SA and these players and, and how they're playing look at the way that midfield is functioning with Hughes and Wharton and all they absolutely did a number on us on Anfield um, scoreline really didn't reflect the number that they did to be honest um, we should have as I said Cody should be back in there um, he'll be he'll be hopping of course he'll be bouncing because you know the excitement of having a child and stuff like that and all and becoming a father and all is absolutely massive and just gives you that pep in your step to go out there you know you've you've something more to prove to the world now than than just yourself you know and um, so congrats to him and stuff like that but this this is going to be a difficult game when you look at that West Ham team and stuff like that you've got Kufal and Suchek this is going to be physical you've got the the brilliance of Ward Prowse on set pieces and um, the physical aerial tread on corners we know all too well. You've got the power of Mikel Antonio. 
you've got the Naus of Kudus, then you've got Paqueta as well, who's in there as well, and talk of him going to Man City if all this betting stuff is resolved, probably going to happen as of like that. He's a phenomenal player as well. And then um, this this could be um, this could be a tough one. This could be a tough one to Palin, and we we could go out on a whimper in these next three or four games. There's no doubt about it. There's nothing easy for us at the moment. The way to West Ham at half twelve on the Saturday is not cushy in any way. We'll have Spurs, we'll have Villa, we have Wolves. These are all going to be tough games. And you know where two weeks ago we were quite excited, maybe three weeks ago, about the FA Cup. We were quite excited about our our title race that we were in. That has all come unstuck now. And a loss tomorrow to West Ham could be as opposed to talking about the title race. We know only mathematically now we're in it. We could be looking over our shoulder at Aston Villa and Emery, who's just signed a new contract and who's playing really, really good football. So it, it is important that we get the three points. It is important that we keep Man City and Arsenal honest in this title race. I don't expect us in any way to want to win it. I don't expect either of those teams to drop two games and drop two clangers in any way. But I'd like to feel that whoever gets it earns it. And I'd like to feel that we push it as hard as we can, even though we're going to come up short. Let's keep it honest. Let's not, like, fall away. Um, and that's going to be really difficult. And, you know, my prediction is going to shock a lot of people. I've never, ever, ever predicted against my team. But I think tomorrow it could be a West Ham 2-1 win. I just think it's going to be near impossible to lift those Liverpool players up off that canvas of Wednesday. If it, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope we go out and we beat West Ham 8-0. But I just, I just don't see it in these players. I don't see them at the moment. I think there's a lack of focus. I think there's a lack of care. Um, I think we're as blunt as be damned up front. I think if the gaffer makes some changes... I think if he was to put a Jaden Dans in there, I think if he was to put a Bobby Clark in there, whoever else, if he was to put a McConnell in there, yeah, he might be sending a message and people might get pissed and go, oh, how can you drop this guy, how can you drop that guy? Just look at the performances since Christmas. They've been awful. So, let's see what happens. You know, we heard from the gaffer on Wednesday when he was asked about the title race and he said, he basically said championship teams don't uh, winning teams don't uh, don't play like this so that was a little sort of subliminal message to the players we heard Virgil van Dijk coming out telling players to look in the mirror it's all a little too late really you know because when it slipped away from you it's easy to look back and go this that and the other and a brand new hat and all but realistically it's it's um, it's a sad end to a final season for Jurgen Klopp Um I think it's going to be I think West Ham are going to just put a bit more misery on that you know what I mean and I just think you know the onus will be on them they're at home you know again very similar to Ever Everton just not on that derby level but a physical team and I just think such a large amount of our players at the moment just don't have it in them anymore um, this season anyway Um to fight that battle to have that physical row in the midfield to try and win over those situations we were so so good against Fulham you know so so good in terms of the midfield in terms of controlling the narrative of the game and then Wednesday we just pissed it all away just couldn't take the, the atmosphere couldn't take the magnitude of the game you know and just just fell asunder lost focus started feeling sorry for ourselves lost shape started going into business for ourselves taking shots from here there and everywhere and it just stank the place out really you know what I mean it's just it's, it's disgusting really you know but look that's it I think West Ham really punched the, the fourth nail into the club coffin tomorrow and 
I'm sure there'll be follow-ups with the last three games as well. I do feel really, really down about this one. Um, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Let us know your predicted lineup. Let us know your score prediction. I feel sick predicting a West Ham win. But I'm looking at Jorgen's body language. I'm looking at his facials. I'm looking at his talk where I bigged up a lot of his talk at press conferences up till recent times that press conference today to me is a man who the last thing he wants to be doing is Liverpool press conferences and if that's him that filters down through the team because he's the superstar so like I said let us know your lineups let us know your predictions can you see a Liverpool win tomorrow can you see a case where, although we may not win, we keep the title race honest? Let me know. Tough times ahead, I would imagine. As always, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification button, drop a like on the video, follow us, we're out there on all the socials, the upper tier, and you'll also get the audio show, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music. I'm back live at 8 o'clock tonight, I have Ian Kelly on, a uh, very, very good friend of the show, good friend of mine as well, started me out podcasting back in the day on the Dynamo Podcast Network. Uh, he was one of the OGs of the upper tier when we started it. Um, so we're going to be on, no actual agenda, he's a Chelsea fan, he's a music fan, you know, and all, everything in between, pro wrestling, the whole lot, so we're just going to have a chat, we're just going to sit back, crack open a beer, have a chat about everything and see where it goes, kind of as he said earlier today, bit Joe Rogan said, yeah, we like talking about conspiracy stuff, tinfoil hat stuff and all that kind of stuff, so join us at 8 o'clock for a bit of a fun show, um, and if you're a Liverpool fan, it might raise your spirits a little bit. Chat you over the weekend, Reds. Have a good one.